Hey everyone, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. A very good morning to all of you. So I hope that you are keeping yourselves healthy and studying hard for your examination. And towards that effort only, I have brought to you this morning tales video. So here, the students who have not subscribed to our channel till now, do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification, guys. You can also join this Telegram group where you can directly connect with your mentors and also you can enjoy the free quizzes that we provide on this group. This is the new course for 2022 RBI Grade D guys. Here you will get PDFs, videos and mocks. Along with all these, you will also get mock interviews. So through those mock interviews, you can prepare yourselves for the final interviews of your RBI Grade D exam. And this is the booklet that you will get if you enroll in this course. And right now we are running a 30% discount on this course. So if you are willing to uh, get yourself enrolled in the course, then you can avail this 30% discount by using the RBI 30 coupon code. And here is the number which you can dial if you have any problem related to the examination or related to the course. So that was all. So here is the first question. Climate change would increase the poverty in India by dash percent in 2040 as per the cost of climate change in India report. So before discussing anything else, let me tell you that this report is released by Overseas Development Institute, which is a London-based institution. Now this report focuses on the economic cost that India would face if the climate change situation continues to deteriorate. So let us first answer this question, then we will understand this report in detail. So as per this report, this climate change is going to increase the poverty rate in India by 3.5% by the year 2040. Now, there is another shocking statement made by this report, and that is that the GDP, India is going to lose an 3 to 10 percent of its GDP annually by the year 2100 due to the climate change. So here we have two shocking statements coming from this report. First is that the GDP loss is going to be around 3 to 10 percent by the year 2100 due to the climate change. And second important statement is that the poverty rate is going to increase by 3.5 percent by the year 2040. Now you would be thinking how the, is this climate change related to poverty exactly because GDP we can easily connect this climate change with GDP but how is this related to poverty so now let us understand that thing in detail so we have discussed this first point here only the second point here is that this rise of 3.5 percent in the poverty rate is equivalent to adding the 50 million people into poverty so this is a very huge number. 50 million people are going to be pushed into poverty due to the climate change. Now, how is this poverty and climate change linked? Climate change induces disasters, natural disasters. And whenever there is a natural disaster, property loss, life loss, and economic loss is bound to happen. And this is uh, going to result in the increase in poverty of the normal people. So this is how the climate change is impacting the lives of individuals and increasing poverty and whenever poverty increases inequality is bound to increase not only in terms of class but also the other social dimensions are included for example gender is also there caste based inequality is going to increase due to the increase in poverty so this is how the climate change is increasing poverty and inequality after this here the next point is that India will lose 2.6% GDP annually if the temperature is going to be contained at 2 degrees Celsius. And if this temperature increases even by 1 degree Celsius, then the GDP loss of India would magnify to 13.4% annually. So this is how the climate change is impacting the GDP of India. Now here you can see the above two points are mentioning that the climate change is already slowing the pace of poverty reduction and increasing inequality in India. So this we have already discussed. This point is here highlighting that the districts, there is also an anomaly seen in the districts. So the districts which warms past, the districts which face uh, heat waves or the districts which where the temperature rises fast grow an average 56% less than those districts that warm the slowest. So that was the second fact. The third impact of this climate change is that it is going to impact the labor productivity. So that is why it is very important that India should start work on low carbon development projects in order to mitigate these impacts of the climate change. So I hope that this report is clear to you guys and the facts that I have mentioned to you right now are not very hard to remember. Just remember this statement because this is the synosure of this report. This is very important statement. 3 to 10% of GDP is going to be lost 
due to climate change and 3.5% is the poverty rate increment in poverty rate by 2040 so that was all about this report i hope that you have understood it well moving on to the second most important report of the day how many children are into child labor at present according to the child labor global estimates 2020 trends and the road forward report of ilo and unicef this is guys a very important report why you would know this thing a little later let's first discuss the answer of this question so how many children are into the child labor at present so out of these many options the right answer is option b 116 million children at present are working as child labor now as i told you that this report is very important so the first reason for it being the important is that it has been released by ilo international labor organization and UNICEF. the second fact here is that child labor has increased for the first time in 20 years so for the past 20 years child labor was decreasing but since 2016 only in the past four years only the child labor has increased the number of children doing child labor has increased so that is why it is very important now let us understand the facts mentioned in this report but first of all let me tell you about the future the near future events so the first near future event is the world day against child labor that is going to happen on june 12 so the world observes this day on 12 june this next point here is that the fifth edition of global conference on child labor will be held in south africa in the year 2022 so these are the near future events therefore you should remember coming to the current situ situation presented by this report so as i told you that 160 million children worldwide are facing the hardships of child labor now this is the result of this increment this addition of 8.4 million children into the child labor in the last four years and million more children are at the risk of being pushed into child labor due to the covid 19. remember guys that i have told you that in the past 20 years from 2000 the year 2000 onwards the child labor was decreasing but since 2016 the child labor has increased so what is the difference between 2000 and 2020? In 2000, you can see that 245.5 million children were into the child labor and this number has decreased to 160 million in the year 2020. So overall, this decrease is 94 million. So 94 million children have been pushed out of the child labor. Here you can also see that from the year 2016 onwards, this increment is being seen in the child labor. So, in 2016, 151.6 million children were there into child labor, but this has increased to 160 million. And this increment is 8.4 million. So, this 8.4 million children were added into the child labor between 2016 to 2020. So, I hope that this picture helps you in memorizing this data better. The next point here is that the majority of child labor is into the agriculture sector. So, it accounts for 70% of children as child labor which is in absolute term is 112 million children. This is followed by the child labor in services sector and industry sector. Now, this is not important for you to memorize all the percentages or all the absolute number, but just you have to remember that which sector engages more child labor. The next point here is that rural areas has a higher frequency or prevalence of child labor in comparison to urban areas and child labor in boys in, is more frequent and is more prevalent than girls at every age the next point here is the age wise data so the number of children aged between 5 to 11 years who are into child labor has increased to over half of the total global figure so 160 million children are into the child labor and the, those who are in the 5 to 11 years of age stand for 50 percent of those children now the children who are engaged in hazardous work and aged between 5 to 17 years their number has increased from 6.5 million to 79 million since 2016 so this is a very shocking number that from 6.5 million this hazardous work this hazardous industry has increased the number of child labor to 79 million so 160 million is the total population of child labor and out of this 160 million 79 million are engaged in hazardous work and those 79 million people are of the age group of 5 to 17. So that was all. Now, what is the forecast? What is this report has in store for the children who are engaged in child labor? Globally, 9 million children are at the risk of 
being pushed into the child labor by the end of 2020 because of this pandemic because pandemic has received the gains the achieved in many social economic di dimensions the second point here is that if if these children are not provided any kind of social protection then this number this 9 million population might increase to 46 million so this is the warning given by this report to the national governments of different countries that they should wake up and act towards protecting the children who are into child labor through various social welfares and legal action so that was all about this report i hope that you have understood it well and the pictures help you in memorizing this uh, data better Moving on to the next question, which has become the first country in the world to adopt Bitcoin as a legal tender? Brazil, Mexico, El Salvador, Colombia, Puerto Rico. Out of these five options, El Salvador is the right answer. So option C is the right answer. So now El Salvador has two currencies. First is US dollar and second is Bitcoin. What is the capital of this country? That is your task to tell me. This is the Central American country. Tell me the capital of this country. Which IIT has developed early cyclone detection technique for early detection of development or strengthening of tropical cyclones in the North Indian Ocean region? So which IIT is it? Kanpur, Bombay, Delhi, Kharagpur and Madras are in the options. Which one is the right answer? The right answer here is IIT Kharagpur. So it has developed this technology and there is nothing much that you can remember from this question. The next is. Which of the following is not a member of Confederation of Hospitality, Technology and Tourism Industry? So this is abbreviated as CHAT. Now this is a new confederation that has been formed by four companies out of these options. So which one is not a member of this confederation? You have OYO, Yatra, Airbnb, Easy, Ease My Trip and Make My Trip. Out of these five options, the right answer is Make My Trip. Make My Trip is not a member of this confederation. OYO, Yatra and airbnb and ease my trip these four uh, companies have collaborated to launch this confederation of hospitality technology and tourism industry what is the purpose of launching this confederation the first purpose is to digitalize the tourism sector okay and second purpose is to promote the domestic tourism the third purpose is to help the small businesses in the travel segment so these are the three purposes for which this confederation has been set promoting technology in the tourism sector so that the people or the tourists can avail services better in a time effective manner then helping these small businesses so that they can engage more tourists and this is how the domestic tourism is going to be increased so in this manner this confederation is going to work your task is to tell me the ceos of all these four companies because they are the persons who are members of this confederation so you have to tell me that in the comment section below on that note, let's say goodbye to each other. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope that you have enjoyed it. And if you have, then do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification. Thank you.